All right, Jason here from septictank.co.uk. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build and make your very own small off-grid septic tank. So these are all the bits and the bobs that you're going to need if you want to make your off-grid small septic tank. You'll need a black gold, a German IBC. These are very heavy duty. They're not like those rubbishy, flimsy white ones you can get on eBay. Um, they're very, very good, very, very sturdy, very, very strong and ideal for making off-grid septic tanks. So that's the tank. You will need um, a drill. This is a, a DeWalt drill. It, it's fantastic for doing these kind of jobs. It's big enough, it's man enough, and it's got the power, but it doesn't cost the earth. I think that was about two, three hundred quid. You'll need a set of pliers. You will need a cutting tool. Now this one I got off eBay. As you can see, it's got a cutting tool on either side there. And in the middle, it's got a drill bit. And this cutting tool will fit into the chuck key of the drill. And I'll show you how to use that in a bit. You've got a hole saw. Now this is a 120 mil, four inch uh, cutting saw. You can see the teeth there and the drill bit in the middle. Again, that fits into the chuck of the drill. And I'll show you how to use that. You will also need some goggles to protect your eyes. You will need two flanges. So these are 110 mil four inch flanges, uh, pretty uh, straightforward. They've got a ridge in the middle there, which means that you can put a pipe in and you can put a pipe out, but uh, the ridge in the middle separates the two. So you need two of those. You'll need two 110 mil donut washers and you'll need two 110 mil uh, baffles or 90 degree angle pipes. You'll need some screws. Um, that is the particular uh, measurements of the screws, the 5.5 times 25. I find that they're the best for doing the off-grid septic tanks. You'll need a can or a bottle of WD-40. You'll need a riser, like so. Uh, sorry, <laughs> you'll need um, a lid, <laughs> a lid and frame. This is the riser here, and you'll need a riser like so. So they're the basic main components that you will need to build an off-grid septic tank. So now let me show you how to construct your very own off-grid septic tank. Okay, so to make the hole on the top of the tank, you need this cutting tool, which I got off Amazon. You need your drill, you need some goggles to keep it safe, and you need some pliers. Now the first thing we're going to do is remove the security tag here. Right. There we go. So that's the tag removed, okay? So we'll put that there. Next thing we want to do, you'll notice on top of here, on top of this lid, there's another small lid. So with the pliers, we remove that. Why do we do that? Well, because on top of the lid here, you'll see an indentation. It's like a rubber bit. And on the other side, it's got um, a core. And why are we doing that? Because we're going to drill down the center of this core, which will give us our, um, the diameter of the hole that we are after. So get the lid, put it back on to the tank. Then the next thing to do is take the drill bit and put it into the drill like so. Then gently make sure it's nice and tight like so. Okay, the next thing, and this is very important that we need to do, is to put the safety goggles on. All right, so there we go. Safety goggles are on. Ta -da. All right, then I'm taking these off the tank because they'll just fall off with the vibrations. If not, so let me go and put those over here. Okay, then once we've done that, we then insert the drill bit into the center of the cap and we slowly pull the trigger until it gets down and drills a little hole into that. There we go. Now, the drill setting, there's one and two settings. I put it on the fast setting here because um, the faster it is, the cleaner the hole and the quicker it does it. So let me show you how to do this now. All right, so we spin that round. Now at this point I normally stop, 
I stop just before I actually um, get a complete 360 hole. Why? Because you get a perfect circle. So there we go. So that is how to simply, easily and safely drill 360, well it's about 350 actually, diameter into the top of the tank. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to show you stage two. So in this video, stage two, I'm going to show you how to put the two holes in the tank, the inlet and the outlet. So this side, we're going to start with the outlet and we will need 110 mil or a four inch hole. So here is a cutter. It's got teeth on, as you can see, you can get these from B&Q or somewhere else and they actually fit into the drill. Simple as that. Just fit straight into the drill bit there. So once you've done that, tighten the socket so it's nice and tight and it's ready to go. So the way I do it is that I use the frame here, the second to top part of the frame as my level. So this side is going to be the outlet, okay, because it's going to be the lowest. So let me show you how I drill the outlet hole. All right, so basically on the beautiful, these German black IBCs, there is a line that goes down the center of the tank. So I, with the drill bit here, I line it up with the line in the center of the tank, and then I slightly push it in, not too much, but just to make it firm. So when it starts drilling, it bites and it binds. So let me show you how to do this. So there you go. The drill bit has gone in. So now all that is uh, making contact is the teeth on the cutter and the German black plastic IBC. So let's drill this hole. Now, I've just remembered one thing. As you probably noticed, I'm not wearing my goggles, which is very silly of me. <laughs> Um, because I forgot. But look, there's the hole, there's the plug that I've just cut out, and there is the outlet hole on this side of the face of the IBC's tank. So I'm going to show you in the next one how to do the inlet pipe, and I'm going to wear my goggles for that one. Okay, so I've got my goggles on now, so never do this without your goggles, okay? So for this one, we need the plug that we got from the first hole. Now, as I said, this is the inlet. And it's very easy to work out, right? You only need a couple of mil difference, right, in height. So we take the plug from the first one, we line it up on top of the bar there, and basically we need a pen. So here, right there, where I've done that mark, was the height of the center of the original hole. So we only need to go three, four, five mil above that. So let's just do that. So let's put it roughly there. So there you go. So X marks the spot. So that's the spot. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I should get a white pen for next time. But the point is, that's the principle of how you do it. Once you've done that, then get your trusty hole saw. Locate the X, which marks the spot. Press the trigger. There you go. We've made penetration then. And then just make your second hole. There you go, it's as simple as that. And then you'll notice that the plastic usually does get stuck in the plug, but it really simply and easily comes out. So that's how to make your inlet and your outlet. Okay, so now you've done your two holes. You now need to get the bits that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So we've got our two donut kind of washers, which are um, 110 mil, four inches in diameter. They're very strong, but there is some give in them. So we've got two of those. We've got our two flanges, all right? And we've got our two 90 degree bends uh, of 110 mil four inch piping. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the flange and we're gonna put it in the hole like that. It really is that simple. Then I'm going to take this pipe, I'm gonna reach inside and I'm gonna push it into the back 
of the flange okay so that's the principle but this is the magic right so in the past people used to use sealant and while sealant is good um, it's been bettered by these rings donut rings right and um, basically it puts a real tight seal on the flange between the hole and where the flange meets the hole so you get your seal you stretch it a bit like so and then you put it onto the flange like so okay then basically you put the flange on here like that and that is brilliant that's a real tight so yes it's loose at the moment okay so i'm going to show you what to do next you get your screwdriver okay and in here i've got a phillips head which goes into the extension bit in the chuck key and here i've got the screws that i showed you before okay so what we're going to do with these screws, we're going to, with the holes that we've got on our flange, we're now going to secure the flange onto the side of the IBC. So this is how we do that. So gently first, so you push it in there and then just gently to start. There you go. Now that is fantastic. So that is screwed into the hole. So what I do is I go diagonal on these holes so it doesn't split the flange, okay? So here is another one. So let's get down into that one. These ones behind the bar, slightly tricky, but they're still easy enough to do. There you go, fantastic. So that's two in. So then I'm gonna put another one in here. So I slightly press them before I actually press the trigger of the drill bit. Okay. And you just need to take your finger off the trigger just as it's biting and connecting as the screw head, you know, has gone all the way through into the tank. All right. So then I'll put this one in next. There we go. And last but not least, the last screw into here. Fantastic, look at that. So that flange is securely attached to the side of the IBC. You can now insert your inlet and outlet pipe into it. Obviously that ridge in the middle stops it going too far in. But, and the seal there is just fantastic, stops any wastewater from leaking back out of the tank. So I'm gonna do the same with the other side and then I will speak to you again in a minute. Okay, so we've done the inlet pipe and the outlet pipe. We've put the flange on with the seal on and we've connected it to the side of the tank with six, six screws in each flange on each side. Now I'm gonna connect the, um, the baffle pipes into the flange. So as I said, I'm gonna put my hand in here and then you reach down and then that just slots beautifully, as you can see, into the back of the flange. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side here as well. Here we go. And that's how easy it is. Now the reason for these baffles is because they stop the solids um, leaving the tank and entering into the soak away. So with this cube septic tank, you'd create a soak away pit for that. And so basically, as I said, these baffles, these 110 mil 90 degree pipes will keep all the fat and the grease and the sludge in the tank. So I'm now gonna show you how to attach the riser. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you've put the uh, baffle in. And let's show you internally now what it looks like. So that's not what it looks like when it's in the hole. It's flush there, it's sturdy. And if I just turn this around here, there you go. So that's what it looks like internally on both sides. So we take eight screws, okay? And the first screw, so let me put these screws, let me put these screws in my pocket. So then we get the first screw like so and obviously make contact with the Phillips bit. Then because they're sharp at the end, they're very sharp, what I actually do, I press down, well obviously get your lid center here, but then I press down firmly, but not too firmly. If you press down too firmly, 
the screw will just fly out. So then I just start pulling the trigger. And then, once it's once it binds, I then screw it straight into the tank like so. So you saw that wasn't too bad, didn't you? And then the next one I do is opposite to that. So if I just do this one opposite. Oh, you see now I put too much pressure on that and the, and the uh, screw came out. So let me do that again. There you go, brilliant. So that's two screws in. So then I do one at, at six o'clock, one at 12 o'clock then. I move, the t I move the tank round, I move the tank round to make it easier. Then I put the next one at nine o'clock. Okay, there we go. And then once I've done that one at nine o'clock, I then put one at seven o'clock and 10 o'clock. All right, so let me show you on this one. Here we go. Again, I stop just as the screw penetrates the top of the riser and the tank and it goes all the way in. I then, to stop it threading or re-threading, I just release the trigger at the optimum time. So there you go. So I'm just gonna do the back of this riser and then I'll show you how to put the lid in or on. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna show you how to put the lid on now. Now on these lids, there is a rubber seal. You can actually see it in there and it actually binds to the plastic. There you go. So you've got a rubber seal in there. So when you put that into the lid, it actually binds and makes it unmovable. But the trouble is, because these are new, they're really difficult to put in. So this is where WD-40, WD-40, yeah, WD-40 really comes in handy. So I get my WD-40, I get a sponge, I then spray inside the lid like so. I then wipe it around with the sponge, just like so. And then I get my lid, I put it on, and it just basically, bang, goes straight into place. So obviously, once you've done that, you won't need to remove that again. That is, uh, uh, you just can't get that out for love nor money. You know, you need a crowbar to get that out. So on the top of the lid are four screws. So because it's childproof, then to get into the lid, to empty the tank, you'd remove the four screws off the tank. So let me show you now what the tank looks like as I do a 360 for you with the camera. All right, so what have we got here? Well, this is the tank that we've just made. We've got our inlet, we've got the flange, we've got the six screws we used, and once that was secured inside, can you see the seal there? That seal is watertight, really is watertight, right? That water, waste water isn't coming out. And you've got your flange inside or your baffle, okay? The other side, we did the same, but as you can see, it's slightly lower. So this is the outlet side. So I'd probably mark that out and the other side in. Made exactly the same way. On top, we've got the lid, which is a riser that we secured with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. And then we put the lid on. So there you go. That is how to make yourself a small septic tank. So thank you very much for watching this video today. If you'd like to see how to make more off-grid septic tanks or would like free help and advice regarding septic tanks, soak away sewage treatment plants, then just go onto Google, type in Septic Tank TV. There you'll see my Septic Tank TV channel with loads and loads of free videos of how to do stuff like this and more. So listen, you take care and I'll speak to you soon. For more information, just click the link below this video or visit septictank.co.uk for free help and advice.